Hello, hopefully you can see me and hear me. So I'm waiting to find out if I am actually doing this with no bloopers. So my um, lovely Emma is by my side and um, I'm waiting for her to tell me that I am visible and audible. Hi Chandra, hope you um you're well. Are you are you working at the moment or have you got a break or what are you doing at the moment? I know you're one of the key workers um in this um crazy time and so yes we can see and hear you. Thank you, Emma. Oh, that's great, I can relax now. <laughs> Oh, I've also managed to fasten the camera onto the more stable table. So hopefully when I'm stabbing away, I'm not going to um, knock the camera off. Um, or, or you get this sort of weird vibration going on on the screen because everything's bouncing up and down with every stab I make. Um, how is everybody? Um, I don't know who is here actually. Let's just have a look. Oh, there's quite a few. 17 are watching now apparently. Hi Donna, um, Taylor, Debs, hi there. Another Donna, sorry Donna, you've got competition. Two Donnas, Sandra, oh excellent, you can hear and see me too. Oh you've got a day off Chandra, well that's um, probably a well deserved day off. Um, hi Diane, and uh, <laughs> It's funny to read that you have to say we can see you and hear you, um, judging on my past, um, on my track record. That's actually quite a miracle. So thank you for um, saying you've grown with me into this, um, yes, into this live stream expert now. Well, I wouldn't call it me that yet, but anyway, I'm getting there. So you're here today because you want to learn how to make a basic bird shape. And it is really a very simple little birdie um, that we're making and um, I've sort of set myself a, um, a challenge to make the rainbows um, of the colors of the rainbow in birds. Um, I'm sticking with pastel colors at the moment because I think they look really charming in these um, sort of spring um, dainty colors where spring's just poking up um, out of the earth and saying oh what's on the other side let's come back and you see lots of these lovely springy colors around so um, I've got my myself set up for some of these spring colors, but of course you can also um, stay with um, the brownie colors if that's what you um, like to do. It is a, a really easy um, shape to make these um, simple little birds. And um, I've chosen to put some of them on a stick because I think they look really nice um, perched on a, in a plant pot. But you can of course um, string them up to have a bird garland, maybe even a, a bird mobile. Um, you could um, give them legs. We um, we have the legs somewhere. That's a good start, isn't it? I've got my scissors this time. Not that I need them, but I've got proper scissors this time, not sticky ones that are horrible. And I've got a pair of bird legs here as well, um, which of course you can also use. Oh, I can't see this at all. Um, maybe here. That's a little bit better. I'll, I'll show them to you close up a little bit later when we get started. But um, <clears throat> if you, um, I'll just show you, if you learn how to make the basic um, shape, then you can um, get more advanced. There's, uh, you can see the bird legs there as well now. There they are, standing up. And um, you can make um, robins with bird, with the bird legs or um, little blue tits. We have got a kit for the blue tits, which makes two, and also the robins, uh, which makes two. So if you, um, if you don't want to rely entirely on your own um, experimenting, then you get the instructions and everything in our kit. And if you've never seen one of our kits, I will show you one close up now. So this is one of our kits there that's the blue tit one I've just grabbed the first one um, it gets you get it uh, wrapped with um, a little so it's a jute ribbon so you can reuse it and guess what of course it's in the rainbow colors 
lots of people like this and they reuse it. It's a really lovely, lovely natural um, fibre. It's one of the things that we're very proud of. Um, we want to use as much um, natural packaging as possible, as, as much environmentally friendly one. And so there's the box. It comes in a, in a craft box. Um, and um, obviously you have to um, open the box. Now this one has been fairly taped up um, as well. So let's just see if the Robin, Robin one is the same. Nevertheless, I'm going to open one just so you can see what's inside. Open it on the side. Oh, I've got scissors. Haha. -ha. I knew they'd come in handy. There we are. Open this up. And inside, you will find the instructions there. This is for the blue tit. Um, you also get your bird legs. Um, in this one here. So you've got um, two pairs, four bird legs there. You also get eyes and for this one you even get beaks. And I, sh I talk a little bit later about these beaks. They're all handmade by us and they're made from silk clay and I'll show you how to make them too. But for this particular one you also get um, the beak and um, the, the four eyes, so two pairs. Then you've got your lovely wools all laid out in the box. Um, you get your felting needles, which are packed up here. Um, and we always put in the kit the exact felting needles that you need to, um, to use for the project. And you just have to remember that way around that they are, of course, sharp needles, so keep them safe. And at the moment, you're getting a little foam mat. But as a little bird will whisper now, is we're really, really trying hard to replace this last bit of plastic in this box with a natural alternative and we're so close i am so excited by it but i don't want to tempt fate so i'm going to touch a bit of wood now and hope that it's um all going to happen that was me knocking my head by the way so this is what um kits typically look like and the boxes are great because you can reuse them use them for put the other things into it keep some um, of your craft materials safe and um that's basically just in case you have never seen a kit packaged up. That's how it's um, how it looks. So um, let's start with um, our little project here. Let's just see how everybody's doing. Who else have we got? I'm trying to um, I'm trying to be clever this time. Um, I watched um, Pam Zassi. She does um, she does regular um, streams on YouTube, and um, she's in fact helped me set myself up. I'm, I'm extremely um, grateful to her and she's been um, she's very good at um, following the live stream the comments whereas I start reading from the bottom up and then it makes no sense whatsoever what people are talking about so I'm trying to uh, to do this from the top up so oh Alex um, yes hopefully everyone is okay watching on the TV so can't always chat um, hi Lynn um, nice to see you hi Pauline how are you doing um, Yana, hi Yana, nice to see you too. Um, Ross, hi Ross, um, I watch on TV and chat on the iPad. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you. why not? You can um, have sort of two things running at the same time. Hi Jennifer, how are you doing? Um, you're getting there with technology, you want to be at this end. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> I'm still yeah, thinking, oh my goodness, am I, what's, what is going to go wrong? Hi Anita. Um, Anita says hello there everyone and um, can you tilt your desk come up a tiny bit we can just see the mouse pad and buttons um, do you mean the one that I'm looking at right now or do you mean the one that I had um, so it's the desk come I have got three cameras on the go which one is the desk come I've no idea is this the one that um, you're looking at right now just just let me know I know that you can see a bit of that pad I can't get that out of the out of the picture really. Um, if I go any higher, then you won't be able to see what I'm doing here. So if this, or is it the other view? Let's have a look. Maybe it was the other view. No, nope, there's a well, there's a tiny, tiny bit of the um, of the computer in there. So I, I don't think that's too bad. You're probably referring to this one. Um, yeah, sorry about that. It's um, and it's also the area where I've actually got to go to. So. Um, we are Miss Chandra. Um, oh, where's Chandra gone? Are you still there, Chandra? Have you left us? Um, 
Okay, so it's the other one. So it must be the overview one. This one? Is this because you can see a little bit of the camera in the, um, of the desktop in there? Ah, I see what you're talking about. Okay, so this is, could be slightly complicated. So just bear with me because two cameras are actually um, doing two things. Okay, now I've sorted one, but now I've got to check that the other one still works. So I'm just going to... Um, no, that was the wrong way around. See, you're confusing me now. Hang on a second. So if I... This one... Okay, I've got to come down with this one again because I've moved the wrong camera. It's fine. I can do this. I know exactly what I'm doing. Okay, I've just got to check the other one again. Bear with me. That's okay, everything's in. Um, so yeah, thank you Emma for that. It isn't too bad, but you might just get a bit more of the matte showing if you lose the buttons. Yeah, I know now which computer you were talking about because I've also got two computers here. And obviously this one is how I um, read the comments. And and the one that you just saw a little bit is the is actually the one has, that does all the magic at the moment. So um, yeah, excellent, great, perfect. So let's get started. Um, I'm dying to make um, a little green um, um, bird. So I've got some, this is actually a really lovely pastel-y colour green. It's almost yellow, but not quite. So if you compare it to the yellow, if you see it on its own, it almost looks a little bit yellow. But if you compare it to the yellow, it's not. We call it our pale green. And um, I'm, I'm perching these birds because um, when you... When you haven't got much time to make things up, they're usually only done half si halfway, so I'm only showing you the nice side. Um, this one is done on both sides, but not not um, not too nice anyway. Um, so you've got your wool bat here. Uh, remember, we love using wool bats um, because they are nice and bouncy, and they um, they're already sort of kind of 3D. Um, it's spelled B A T T. If you don't know anything about wool bats or wool. And it's in contrast to the wool tops, which is usually like a long, um, fine fibre. I've probably got some here. There we go. Pull one out of the box. That's a wool top. Um, the fibres are aligned side by side, really long, fine fibres usually. And um, it's really quite hard to turn this into a 3D shape because it's, it's very flat. And these long fibres have to tangle up and it takes a long time for them to sort of um, tangle up and if you stab it like this you just end up with lots of pop marks that they don't really tangle up you're just making holes into it whereas if you've got a lovely a lovely wool bat the fibers are short you can see I can when I tear um, there's, there's bits coming off rather than long strands and um, it's really easy to roll this into um, a shape um, and that's exactly what I'm doing if you've watched some of these live streams you will know that we've been doing a lot of basic shaping and um, with a basic shaping everything starts and from there you can become the expert that you might be striving to be so i'm rolling the uh, wool bud up in on itself so i'm literally um rolling it into a soft shape and i'm trying to be i'm trying to keep it slightly sort of um oblong or egg shape um so that it, um there's only these wispy fibers that are sticking out and it's those wispy fibers that I'm um, first of all stabbing down. So if you are felting along, I'm going to go on to um, a bit of a closer view now. But all I've done for now is I've just stabbed these wispy fibers in. I've got sort of a, 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 a strange kind of um, rolled up sausage shape with a it's it's a little bit more pointy at one end and a bit more rounder at the other. But that's entirely unintentional. But um, because it is, I can use that as the end tail and that as the fa face tail. But if you've got um, one that looks the same on both sides don't worry about it you can shape it easily so um, okay right so no no new um, um, comments so I'm going to go really close now so that you can see me um, just doing this shape now so this is my shape here and um, all I'm I want to do now is I want to make it slightly round so that it looks more like this and this is going to be the belly of the bird and then this is going to be the tail end and this is going to be the head and that's all I'm going to do all this shaping just with my needles um, with the needle that I'm stabbing into it and if you've never needle felt it before you have got a felting needle that is a specialist needle 
Um, this one is actually a twist, has got a twist in it. It's one of our favorite needles. It's a, um, a coarse um, twisted needle. Um, you can just about see perhaps how it's sort of twirly at, at the end. Um, I'll show you on a on a um, different needle what what um, you should be able to see these. Can you see these notches in? Um, so these are actually they they don't stick out. They're like little little grooves inside the needle. So if I run my finger along it, it sort of gets stuck, but only in one direction, not in the other, because obviously as you push the needle in, it pulls the fiber inward. And I can show you this. So as I push the needle in. It sort of tucks the fiber in, can you see? So wherever you're stabbing the needle, that is where the reduction takes place and that is where the felting process takes place. So now I've flattened this bit. And um, I'm going to work on this all around a little bit now. And if you are felting along, then you might be doing exactly the same thing. If you're trying to reduce this, the, um, the size um, or the, the, the length of something, instead of you going straight into it because you just flatten it you can't actually go along it so you're pulling the fibers in but you are pulling them in lengthways rather than completely flattening the um this this bit here which i'm going to make my tail end of the of the bird so i'm already concentrating on the um parts on of the vital parts that i need to concentrate on what one is making that um tail sort of slightly kick up there I haven't touched the head area yet when you roll things up you might end up with a swirly bit at one end you can just tease this um, tease the wool out and just fold it over and um, felt it in and then you've made that smooth alternatively you can just use a wisp of other wool and lay it over the top and you can cover up any um, uneven bits that way too so I'm just felting now um, on the head part I'm trying to make that part of the head quite firm because there's a, lo a lot gonna um, is gonna happen to it we have to um, add a beak onto it and we have to add the eyes and we, we really want this to be quite a firm part and what what I said earlier is um, I want to work on the bird so that this becomes nice and round so it's gonna be more like this and um, to do this I'm actually gonna sit it on its tail and I'm literally going in the in that um, semicircle along its tummy shaping it so that it becomes more round I don't know what the quality is like um, oh bye Jennifer you're doing local volunteering good on you well done um, we'll catch up with you soon um, there we are and um, and so you can see that um, I've made this a lot rounder. I've also made this quite wrinkly, but that's okay. We can just felt that down straight into the wrinkly bits. If only it would work like that with my wrinkles, but unfortunately it doesn't. So, but it does work with wool, so that's good. There you go. And I'm I'm um, just shaping this little bird but I'm at the same time I'm also firming it up so I'm making the, the shape a lot firmer and um, I'm just thinking of a, of a bird shape which is sort of a little bit like um, it's a little bit like um, you know sort of a seesaw thing that um, like a, um, what is it called again they're not seesaws you know what I mean whatever that is so it goes like this and then you've got um, the area here which is the tail that's sort of pointing up and then you've got a rounder area here which is the which is the head and that's all I'm focusing on so I'm trying not to make the bits that I still need sticking out flat but I'm, I'm working my way around the whole of the shape I'm just going back to my favorite needle which is the one of the is the coarse twisted and it, it actually can tell it really does work quite a lot um, is a lot more efficient than just a base a normal coarse needle having that twist at the end of the needle increases the surface so you can actually put more notches onto it and it also it, it um, yeah it just goes into the wool and you can just feel how much more efficiently it works I don't know if you can see it on the camera but I can definitely feel the difference the other one that I love is the is the um, this one is also a twisted needle but the actual shape, if you took a cross section of that needle at the tip, 
is like a cross. So again, you have a twist and a cross shape. And again, you can just add a lot more um, notches onto that area. So you have a quite an efficient needle there. If at any point you think, oh, this there is bits missing or this is a bit out of shape, um, you you could, of course, um, try and shape it by, sh by stabbing your needle into other parts of the little bird to, um, to make it um, more shapely. But if, if it really is, is quite um, obvious that you need a little bit more head on your bird, then you can just use a bit of extra wool. Um, you could pad it up by using, by tearing off little patches of wool like this. Um, none of my birds that are on display, ha I have um, needed this, but I'm just showing you that this is a way of making. And then you have another patch that's slightly bigger than the little patches that you're adding there. And then you lay them over the head and you cover it with that slightly larger part and you can felt that down and you've added uh, quite a substantial um, bulk to the bird. Can you see how that has added quite a lot of bulk? And then you can first of all fasten it in by stabbing it around the edges but then you can also um, obviously stab all around the, the new area that you've um, added onto so that it actually is felted rather than just um, unfelted um, on top there. I think this is such a great colour. If anybody um, makes um, budgies or anything like this, this is sort of one of these um, greens that you can find on, on them. That It's that colour between the green and the, and, the, and the yellow. So I think it's a really nice spring colour. It's our pale green and um, there you go. I've now um, established that part that I've just laid over the top and, um, and, and pushed it right in. So let's just see how everybody's doing. Uh, I'm just going to go big again here. Um, a fat banana. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. It's definitely not as long as a banana and um, yeah, definitely nice and fat. Um, a rocking horse. Yeah, that's it. It's a rocking horse, of course. Thank you, Emma. Um, and um, so the next thing we're going to do is it's um, it's quite quite rewarding <clears throat> to um, oh you you still there, <clears throat> Chandra? Um, I, am I in your car? I need to know if I'm in your car. Chandra has got this very fancy car with um, a, a big screen in there. And, um, and and she often watches, um, it must be really scary, me just being there on the console um, looking at you. But um, um, I hope you're all right. I know, um, yeah, I know it's um, tough times, everybody. How is everybody anyway? How's everybody coping with this lockdown? How was your Easter? Um, speaking for myself, I've, I've, um, I've started, or I've tried to think of positive things that have happened during the last three, four weeks. And um, I, I, I almost don't want to put it out there because, you know, how could anything positive ca come out of some sh something as dreadful as this where lots of people are, um, you know, losing their jobs. And that's probably not even the worst when you um, consider that people are going to be, I don't know, losing family, using, losing friends. And, um, and I thought, no, actually, there are some good things that have come out of this, for, certainly for myself. And, um, and you'll laugh your socks off now because one good thing is that I've learned how to blanch almonds. C couldn't buy up blanched almonds, so I had to work out how to do it myself. It's really fun, you should try it. Just put them in, in hot boiling water for one minute and then they sort of like, the skin shrivel, shri um, shrivels up, I oh, can't even say it, terrible word for German. Um, the skin crimples up around them and then you just squeeze at one end and they pop out. It's, it's um yeah it's quite fun to do and the other good thing that came from it is that um i'm using dried pulses instead of tinned pulses because it was hard to buy them in tins but on there's lots of on the shelf of um, the dried packages and so i've been um soaking um chickpeas and made my own hummus um, and other chickpea dishes um very delicious and um yeah lots of other beans and bean stews and so on and uh, the other thing is that I um, made my own pesto because there was a time when not just the pasta was gone, but also the pesto. And um, so they, now I can't actually eat the shop bought stuff anymore. It's just too delicious having a bit of fresh basil, um, some garlic and um, salt 
and um, what else goes in there? Oil, olive oil, of course. And then you just um, mix it all together. I've got one of those. It's not, it's not an electric um, shredder. God. <laughs> okay, this is why I don't sell kitchenware because I don't even know the um, expressions. But it's one of those where you pull it and it, the, the blade goes round and round and you pull, pull, pull and the blade goes round and round and it shreds everything in there. I like it because it doesn't completely mash it like for example a Nutribullet where it's liquid. This one actually makes it more bitty like oh yes gnats and there's and that, that's where the blanched almonds came in and um, because I actually much prefer blanched almonds than with pista um, pistachio nuts I realized because I couldn't get pistachio nuts so I tried bl blanched almonds and it tastes much nicer I find anyway so there you go. Those are, um, it's all food related, um, but I, I also think that it's done my family quite well. Um, just slowing down, basically. We've all just slowed down a bit. So, um, catch you later, Diane. Uh, out on my exercise walk. Good for you. Just past the field of bluebells. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, the bluebells are just coming out where we are as well. And um, the wild garlic, the, wi the white flowers. Um, and Anita, you're in your bubble where you are um, able to make a nice family day. We are luckier than so many. I, I agree with you. Um, you're making an alpaca, Pauline. Oh, that's amazing. But I like to stub along with everyone else. Oh, I know. You're missing the stub alongs, aren't you, at our shop? Yeah. One day, they'll, they'll be open again. Um, Donna, you've made um, homemade pesto. Nice. Um, yeah, it is kind of a food processor, Emma, but it's it's like a hand pulling food processor. It's it's it, it could be could be without electricity, and I could still make pesto. Pesto, clock clockwork blender. It might be that. Yes, it's nice with uh, pine nuts too. I I agree. Anyway, so let's go back to the bird. We need to give the bird um, some eyes and a beak. I'm just going to zoom in um, close up again. Okay. There we go. So what um, what I always like is I always like to make the indentations where the where the eyes are going to go because that sort of kind of shapes the head a little bit. So I'm just consistently stabbing into an area where the eyes are going and then I do this on the other side and you have to make sure that they are on the same level. So it's always good to look um, at the bird from face on and then you can see the two indentations are are here and they, they look pretty good and now it it uh, you get sort of a sense of where the beak needs needs to go and where the head might need a little bit more shaping now adding a beak is quite simple i've got a bit of um, brown wool here and uh, you can because it's a tiny bird and we're not making a perfect um, copy of something you can just roll this into um, sort of um, a shape of a kind give it a twizzle between your fingers and you almost can make a, a beak without even needle felting it but just give it a few steps to um remember to turn it round the fibers will sort of sink into your felting mat so you it might look a little bit frizzy but felt it down first of all and then when it's felted just um, flatten the fibers if you want to you could cut them off and then you've got an area that's felted and an area that's unfelted and the area that's unfelted you open up if it's massive and it will cover the whole face of the bird, then obviously um, take some of those wispy bits off. But if it's like this, you can just plonk it in front of um, on the on the bird bird's nose there, and then just stab it in where the fluffy bits are sticking out, and stab them as close as you can into the um, near the beak beak space, so that they disappear into the green very close to where the beak is, rather than covering. Um, the face of the bird and um, and whenever you um, do any work on 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 a shape you always have to sort of adjust the outside but um, he's got a little beak now if if the green has um, spilled uh, sorry the brown spilled into the face you could just cover it with a little bit of green now for that two options you can either um, just use a little bit of black like this uh, twizzle it into um, a manageable portion lay it into the eye socket and just felt it down and that is absolutely fine um, to use for eyes if you happen to have um, bead eyes you could sew them in if you um, have um, our glue in eyes they look a little bit like this they come on a um, metal stem and then it's a glass 
bead at the top. Um, you can uh, fasten them into the bird by poking a hole with your needle. That should be enough, but whenever you put the needle in, remember it comes out at the other end, so don't have your finger there. And then you will have made a little hole. Can you see it? And that is um, where you push the eyes in straight away and you've got um, you've got a little sparkly eyes, eye there. It is it. It does look slightly different. You can put a little bit of a reflection, a white re reflection spot onto that um, black eye. But um, we, we love those bird eye, um, those uh, glue in eyes. They're just, um, they're just, you just can't beat them really. But if you're making this um, for a child and um, it's a small child and you don't, don't want to run any risks, um, would help if I had the same size eye. Let's just see. Oh, that's better that one in and then once the eye is in you do need to glue it in um, we love these little glue sticks we do sell them too they are really handy because they've they've got a small nozzle but also there isn't masses in there and if you ever, only ever use it for um, bird legs and and um, glue in eyes um, then it takes ages to get through a whole tube and and at least the, the glue doesn't dry out and you just put a tiny tub, dab of glue behind the eye I don't know if you can see this there and then push the eye back in and then you do exactly the same on the other side so what I'm trying to um, tell you is don't take the eye out again because it's going to be a pain having to find the hole that you made on top of a uh, sticky glue and then just push it in and if it shows a little bit white don't worry that will just dry entirely and you've got a really lovely little bird there already um, and we just need to give it a few wings now well two actually so um, you can still shape, obviously, your little bird for however long you like. In fact, some people don't really know when to stop. Um, and that's absolutely fine. You can um, needle felt until the cows come home. If you're an impatient crafter like me, then um, the good news is that things happen quite fast and you might not have to um, do this for hours and hours. So um, I'm just giving him a little bit more shape because I want to now um, add the wings and I just notice on top of here it looks it, it's bothering me it looks a bit uneven again just take a little wisp of wool lay it over the top stab it in and you just cover it up um, and you you nobody's any the wiser what was underneath there so you're not adding bulk that way you're just covering up um, little uh, imperfections so for the wing um, you could just literally felt a wing onto there in a contrasting color I quite like that um, that lovely uh, blue here. The the wool that I've been using for the main bird of uh, the shaping of the bird is um, is a New Zealand merino. The one that I'm using now is a mountain sheep. So obviously they're all dyed, <clears throat> and um, just felting this on now. There we go. And. Um, that is um, has got a little a little. Um, it, I've literally just made the shape as I'm felting it on. I'm not being too precise. Literally just put the bird wing on there, and then you could put a contrasting color over the top, um, just just for fun. Um, just a little wisp as a little contrasting color. You could even keep it in that sort of bird wing shape there, and then you have the challenge to do it on the other side. And make sure that it's um, symmetrical so you have to keep looking at what you've already made just to get an idea where it um, where it needs to end up there we go um, by the way if you want to see more demonstrations um, I'm actually on create and craft on the 19th of April and we are, we're bringing lots and lots of different kits with us um, to that show on Sunday I don't I have, I'm not quite sure what time I will be on, but it will be sometime on Sunday morning. So I will um, announce that on um, Facebook. Needs a little bit more. So if you have, if you've shortchanged, um, it's always better to put a little bit less wool on because you can add more rather than adding too much and then you have to pull it off. So it's much easier to add than to take off. And then just put your little. And as I'm felting this down, I notice my bird is going a little bit flat. So I'm just shaping him um, again a little bit. 
just to make sure to give, give him that round um, shape again and um, just adding a bit of orange there yeah go over the top in that same sort of shape there we go and I've now made a little bird with um, a blue wing with a little bit of orange on it now to put them on a stick I'll just go um, a little bit big again here to put them on a stick um, you could use um, a bamboo skewer if you have one there nice and straight even got a pointy bit so that will help um, sticking it into the bird but if you haven't got one then don't despair don't go out to buy one because you're not allowed to do just go out and buy um, bamboo skewers that's going to be even as much as you try and convince them that it's really essential to perk your bird up um, you might not be able uh, to get away with that but um, nature has got answers too I've actually been out and um, been looking for sticks as well you might just have to um, ooh, not break it hang on I've got another one <laughs> I was going to say, you might actually have to just um, take off some of the knobbly bits at the end of the um, stick so that you can um, put it inside the bird. But for this, it's best to use an awl. This is this is uh, what that is called, an awl, A-W-L. And uh, you can poke that into the bird. Let's keep it nice and so twizzle it more rather than just pushing it in because you might just flatten the underneath of the bird might have to be quite a big hole so because the, 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 the branch is quite big and then follow that line by just gently um, putting the tw twig into there it might pull the bird in a little bit but if it does don't worry too much about it because you can always um, add a little bit of felt um, a little bit of wool and felt it on underneath it and then just squirt a bit of glue inside the bird so that will um, help the stick to stay in one place and um, you can see here it looks a little bit like an indentation so just take a little bit of your main green color put it around the stick there and just felt it under the bird so to un um, to even out the dent that you've just made by adding the stick into it and then you've got your bird on the stick you can join the others now there that's my green one done he's not going to show himself from his best side but um that's okay we don't always have to show ourselves from the best side um i thought they had light blue sheep in new zealand yeah they they might have at some point but um i'm sure people are working on um on making um blue sheep would cut hole would cut out a whole um process um Oh, you've just got your sleeping fox, Ross. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. I should mention it. If you've been wondering what this snoozy little creature is doing here in the background, this is um, our April Makers box. We do uh, monthly subscription boxes and uh, you get to make him. I'll just pull him out from behind the bird. You get to make him, not not the ladybird. This, he's just landed on his back. Um, you get to make this um, lovely curled up sleepy snoozy fox in the April um, box. And um, for those who already subscribe, you will know that you, you can skip payments any times so that you don't want to do every month. Um, you can also unsubscribe any time. We don't tie anybody into um, a contract and they're extremely reasonable and very good value for money, these subscription boxes. And very popular. We've been doing them for three years now. And then next month, <clears throat> um, this is um, the May project. Um, you'll be making um, a fawn. There it is. It's going to be slightly smaller. I've been working on it at the weekend and I know it's going to be slightly smaller but there'll be a nice surprise um, in the box um, for decoration and then we've just added a new subscription box into our subscription box um, range and that is making fairies and this is our spring fairy um, so you get a lovely pink box with all the contents in it um, and um, these are so easy to make. We've had some lovely reviews from people. If you want to see them, just pop onto our website and, and read what people have said about making these fairies. They're such a lovely um, bit of, like, it's it's very little needle felting in there, but they, they add um, such a lovely fresh colour splash into anybody's house, and they're really nice for presents, to make for presents. 
and then next month is going to be the pansy flower fairy this one here and then in june is going going to be the um forget me not fairy but there will be others as well and they come all with lovely little accessories so i'm going to start on another bird um a knitting needle is also quite good yeah you could use a knitting needle to uh, per perch your um to put your bird on um yeah as long as you don't mind that it's not going to be a knitting needle after that um hello from france hi jen thank you dawn for this great site oh you've had a friend called dawn who recommended it oh i wonder if we know dawn um how is it in France? Um, is it France that have just started to lift some of the... Or was it Spain? I can't remember now. I spoke to my family in Germany at the weekend. That's another good thing. I haven't spoken to them in ages. And I was um, actually talking to my dad and my sister all at the same time on WhatsApp, which um, has never happened before. So uh, um, another good thing has come from this. And uh, it's slightly different in Germany in that they, they're discouraged from going out, but they can still visit each other. And then um, just have the social distancing in place, even though they're in each other's houses. Um, my sister lives on a small island in the North Sea and the island is completely in lockdown. So um, all the business that they're normally getting at this time of the year with tourists coming in, um, mostly from Germany and from the Netherlands, is absolutely not allowed. And um, they're tearing their hair out because they've had the most amazing sunshine there as well and it would have been um their best probably start to the season and they're having to um just sit down my sister she said oh this is the first time i've ever spent easter sunday with my family <laughs> because they're normally working um at um at at their um they're at the beach and they have a it's like a beach kiosk but it's really big and it's right in the dunes and it's absolutely beautiful i've been there many times but um nobody is allowed to go there at the moment um um i'm using oh i see you meant to poke a hole not um <laughs> oh yes well there you go um well you can poke a hole with a knitting needle as well that is true <laughs> thank you donna sorry <laughs> okay let's start another bird i also should maybe talk about um this here so we do a pack we, we do actually sell um a wool that is carded so that the color runs from one to the other now i want to i want to say it's a rainbow but it's not a rainbow um can you guess why it's not a rainbow it's like come on don't call this a rainbow because it's not a rainbow it's because they got the colors in the wrong order and so we're just calling it multicolored but you can buy this whole um um literally mix of wool it doesn't look as as, as um tatty as this i've just pulled a strip off um and then you get um your your yellow green orange which shouldn't be there um purple and blue so <clears throat> that's um basically a great way of making these birds if you wanted to make them and then you can put them in rainbow order if you want so i'm going to um in fact i might just try and do a purple one take take that middle bit out there and Um, I was meant to bring down a massive big um, 15 color rainbow wool bag but I've forgotten so anyway it's not here so there's a, a, a bit of purple now um, just take well actually it might be quite nice to have a bit of blue and and orange in there as well I'm gonna make another bird so I've got my blue and I've got my green I've got a pink I know there isn't a red but we're sticking with pastel colors I'm rolling this up as I did before into a sort of a sausage shape and now I'm stabbing the loose wispy ends in so to fasten them in and now I've got my um, it's not a great background that I'm wearing here so um, and I probably need a little bit more because it feels a bit on the light side this bird so I'm just adding a little bit more bulk to it because it's um it's probably not quite enough purple in that strip that I've torn off I'm just going to stab that on already and now I'm going to look at it and think and decide which one is the tail end this might be the tail end and this might be the head end and um, I'm working on the bird accordingly remember um, I'm just going to go take myself out of this because my 
my blue um, top doesn't um, do much to um, this purple. So I've got my shape here. I'm keeping that as the top and I'm working um, this into the round. So I'm turning it upside down so I can work the round and I'm going in a semicircle either by holding it that way, stabbing into it. So this, this bluer end is going to be my tail end. Um, this is, by the way, this this these um, this multicolored wool is a plant. Um, no, I mustn't say that. It's natural dyed. It's not all plant dyed, but it's a nat it's natural dyes, and um, you have things like weld and mudder, um, but there is also cochineal in it, which, um, if you do know, that is a dye that comes from beetles, which is why we can't say it's a plant dye. It's it has got some. Um, um, non-plant dyes in there but they're all natural dyes so they're not they haven't they're not chemicals um, as such to use for to achieve the colors so I'm working the shaping of my bird here making that head come up a little bit now not making it as pointy as the tail so I'm shaping all around get a nice bird shape as the top always remembering that um, the base I want to, to, to be nice and round and I'm stabbing that all over. If you are a wet felter then those natural dyed wools won't work so well because um, the dyeing process involves that they are already in uh, put into hot water and so even though it doesn't feel like it, they have the, the felting process has sort of slightly started with any of the other wool butts um, that, that I've been using they are um, not um, felted at all, so you can um, you can use them for wet felting as well. It's definitely going to be a bit of a smaller bird because I haven't got quite so much wool here, but I could cover the top maybe with a bit of this lovely orange. Looks probably quite nice because it blends sort of in the rest of it. So I'm making the head a little bit bigger, put that out a bit, just pulling the. Um, purpley bits of that part so I'm, I'm now putting that part of the head out and bulking it up a little bit just like I did with a bluebird where we didn't need to do it but here I am doing it add a bit of bulk to the bird and it's quite nice because the fibers they are already really sort of gently running into each other <clears throat> I should also just remind everybody that on Thursday I'm doing my book launch for the Making Soft Doll book um, as a live stream. That's the first time I've ever done that. Um, it's it's just one of those times where I can't meet people and um, have a nice glass of wine. It will have to wait. So, and I can't even have a glass of wine on um, on Thursday, but you could at home. Um, cheer cheer um, cheer the book for a with a glass of wine. I can't do it because I'm driving home and um, me and alcohol doesn't do too well, even just a tiny drop. So I have to um, do it when I get home. And um, it's it's really to introduce the book. I will bring all the dolls out. I'll talk about them. I'm hoping that you've got lots of questions for me. And I will explain a little bit about the style of dolls, uh, what materials to use. I will even make a little demonstration of... Um, I'm quite decided yet and there will be a competition so you can win yourself um, a signed copy of the book as well so I'm hoping that lots of, of you people will be joining in and um, and asking questions and maybe have a little a little virtual party um, it's always comes always at a great cost writing these books because uh, it, it usually involves me sitting at home being very grumpy with my children for a long time and um, getting up at um, ridiculous times in the morning <clears throat> um, because um, that's often the only I'm an early riser and I'm an early I'm an early worker so that's the time where my brain works the best always has done and um, and then yeah just <laughs> write lots of things and make lots of things and um, take lots of photos so you don't forget what you've actually um how you've made it and then um, write it all up and then it goes to the then it goes to the publisher and the editor will um, look at it and then um, the book designer will look at it and um, so the books finally 
out in print. And I've got a copy here, so I'll just show you the front cover if you haven't seen it yet. There you go. Ooh, it doesn't fit into the camera. Making soft dolls, and they are literally, I mean, this is obviously larger than life um, size because these are ginormous hands on there, and they are, they're meant to be children's hands as well. And um, there are lots of um, dolls in there, from dolls' house dolls to um, bigger size dolls and different styles, different degrees of difficulties for different age children or grown-ups and um, just a lot of fun to make. There's also a little bit of needle felting in there as well. Right, quite happy with that shaping of the bird there. So I am um, wanted to show you how to make silk play beaks. So if you like the idea of um, giving a more realistic looking beak, which of course um, birds don't have fluffy beaks, everybody knows that, um, this is um, the brown silk clay that we get it the right way around there that we sell we also have um, um, black white and pink we find that these are the only ones that um, are sort of required and I'm and the, the easiest way to um, sorry for rummaging but I've just re realized I need something else that I haven't got handy so I'm just leaning out here to get oh God, just gotta get something else excuse me um, it's easiest to use a little bit of wire, um, and I know I've got some here. Just gonna get it. Oh, come on out! And if you're using wire, you also need um, wire cutters, which I've also got. We do, by the way, sell lots of this um, different size wire, which is great for making wire armature. Um, comes in all kinds of different um, thicknesses we, we do steel copper and aluminium and the one that i'm using here is an aluminium one because i don't need a very um a very strong wire i'm just going to cut off about what's that an inch to two inches put that to one side and all i'm doing now is i'm just going to bend the end into a loop flatten that a little bit there so I've just bent this into um, a wire with a bit of a loop at the end and I'm going to get some of this silk clay out. I need tiny amounts, it literally is really, um, beaks are so tiny. Put the lid back on so, because it will dry out if it's not um, nice and um, kept. This is a ginormous beak so I'm even going to half this now because it's too much. And then you're um, putting that on onto the end of your wire. And then while it's on, that's when you're shaping it. So you're shaping this into a big shape, whatever big shape you want it to be. And I'm flattening the end a little bit at the same time. So it sits nice and flat on the bird's um, nose. And now you can use your felting needle and make a tiny little dent into the sides so that it looks like the beak is, um, you can probably not see this on this camera. I have no idea if you can or not, but, um, and then you meant to leave it to dry, obviously. So I'm just going to, and, and that can take up to 24 hours. You can speed it up by putting it on the radiator, but something tiny like this will dry a lot faster than 24 hours. But I'm just leaving it for a minute and I'm putting um, my eye sockets into the bird first. Oh, sorry, I'm just reading some of the comments as well. I know, Chandra, you've flown over that little island that my sister lives on it's called Borkum it's um yeah it's a really it's a really magical place it's one of these well kept um secrets that, that um for some for some reason whenever we go there with the everybody knows who we are because we're the only english speaking family on the island because they tend to just get germans and dutch going i don't I have no idea but but i think because it's such a small island they've only got 6000 inhabitants it's completely surrounded uh, by uh, sand beaches it's really lovely and it's got its own little microclimate and um, um, I've no idea why people in general why there's no other foreigners going there I think they just keep it as a as a secret um, and the Dutch know it because it's in Dutch waters actually um, yeah so just making holes for the ice to go in sorry bird squishing you there Got the eyes in, so I'm just going to glue them in quickly. Little dab of glue behind the eye. I, su I suppose you can't do any flying at all now, um, 
um, Chandra. Um, oh, Donna, you got your book today. Um, I volunteer on Thursday delivering lunches, so might be a little late to the book launch. Yeah, I totally understand that. Um, oh, and Edie, um, Jana's daughter, she's only little. She's recognized my voice, probably more my accent. Hi, Edie, you can hear me. Um, how are you doing? Are you missing school? She's only just started and there she is, got the longest holiday of her life. Um, so there's the little bird now. And now I'm going to put the beacon, despite it not being dry. But I'm making, um, again, I'm making a hole with my knitting needle. Uh, no, not that Donna suggested that. With my um, felting needle. And then I'm putting the wire straight in. Bearing in mind that um, it's not dry. So I'm actually shape misshaping it. Um, and what I'm going to do is just cut that wire a tiny bit shorter. Because um, that needle hasn't made a big long enough Hole. I might have to um, add the little lines for the um, side of the beak in it again. So normally you do this when the, when it's dry, okay? Not like me. But if you add it, um, add a beak made from silk clay, it does give it a much more realistic look. And then, of course, all you need to do is, again, just add a bit of glue behind it and let it dry. And um, my bird has got a very misshapen beak because I'm not letting it dry but it will be fine um, in the long run so there you are and then you can uh, decorate it doesn't always have to be a darker color on the side in fact I don't really want to go dark on this one so maybe just use a little bit of um, I haven't got any pink I think it's because I've already got a pink bird I didn't bring any pink but I've probably got some pink hidden away here come on there's always pink in a box Maybe not. I'm looking for particular pink as well, which doesn't help. Um, so I might have to let go of my pink um, desire. But I've got some flesh pink. How about that? Let's use some flesh pink. There, put that on the side. Oh, that looks quite nice, actually. Um, shape the wing. It is just a... a um, this is not, obviously... Um, you know, we're not making realistic-looking birds. These are fantasy birds. So you can make them any colour you want. I'm just giving that a bit more of a round shape. You always have to uh, watch when you add the wings that your bird doesn't suddenly become a little bit flat. Especially if it's not felted very solidly, mine aren't. And then I'll add a little bit of <clears throat> yellow over the top here. There. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I've got another little bird ready to be perched on a stick. Use a bit of that pink there I think it's it, it would be especially nice if you made lots of these and um, and have them sitting almost like you could have them the, the sorry you can't see what I'm pointing at the moment I'll go big in a minute let's um, do that now there that's better if you've got them all in a in a uh, in a maybe you have some lovely for cipher in there or um, some other uh, branches that are some pussy willow or maybe just some um, nice fresh green um, branches like beech is, is out at the moment and um, have the little birds just sitting amongst them and um, one wing is completely in a different place good thing is you can peel it off and um, adjust it slightly if it's not quite in the right way there we go Give it a bit, make sure that that round shape stays round. Um, I'm using, um, I, I th uh, there's probably so many of you who've heard me say this so often, so but there will be others who haven't ever heard me say this. I'm using um, my, um, on here as my felting mat, it's the earth friendly felting mat. We, um, we absolutely love these. These are one of our best selling products now and we're delighted because it just means that people aren't buying the foam mats at the moment and replacing them with these uh, virtually indestructible felting mats. This one is a, a large one, it's an A4. Um, they have a, a soft top, which you can see the fibers do get um, stuck in it. And we, we, we normally have some rubber brushes that um, we sell to, um, to clean these, but we sold out. And so 
I'm not sure when we get new ones in, but the base the base one is a slightly um, denser 70% um, wool felt and um, it, it, it acts as a break for the needle. So when you stab the needle into here, you, you, if it was both as soft as the top one, it would sort of just go too far. But I can't, I, I, even stabbing like this, I can't really stab the table. It sort of stops short of it because of that mat underneath, which doesn't really take the needle and um, on its own. And um, they're really great and they're literally indestructible. You buy it as a set, but if you um, want to replace any of them, you can also buy them individually. Um, and the top one is 100% wool, so if you feel you need to replace it nobody so far we know has done um you you can and then this can go in the compost it's at 100 percent compostable there we go got another little bird there with a nice tiny yellow wing and i'm going to put him because you can also use um this uh, wire stem um which is quite hard to bend but um you can of course use that as well if you've got whatever you've got at home just um just have a little rummage you might have um might not even have to go out in the garden who knows what is kicking around in your drawers at home and put this one in as well and again um you can felt the bottom a little bit more if you want to i haven't glued this in now i'm just going to stick it into the into the um cup here with all the others um yeah no flying at the moment i can imagine um chandra um, so yes, she says, so she's missing school, obviously, ED, that was the, um, no training, so you can't even learn anything else. Um, okay, so the, f the flying, is that what you're talking about? The flying is a shame that it's not happening because it would give you social distancing. Is that, um, what are we referring to, um, Ross? Oh, just dropped all the, um, the eyes, but that's okay. Um. So if anybody has got any um, any questions, just fire away. Otherwise, I'd say we're coming to the end of it all. Um, I think we've done all right with uh, in terms of rainbows. So let's just lay them all out, and you can see. So we've got our green, got the yellow, got the blue, and we've got the purple. And we've got a pink. How is that? There you go. Um, yeah, quite nice. I really like them. And um, if you want to make um, more realistic birds, remember you can get um, a robin and a blue tit kit from, um, from us, or maybe you can work it out yourself even now. Um, I, it's really not that difficult. We've also got um, the blue tit in our Making Needle Felted Animals book as a as the as a more realistic bird, and there's also the blue tit and um, some other bird in the Simple Needle Felt book, which um, they are here the book. So there you go, and there's um, the blue tit and the robin. The robin is the um, obviously the most popular british in fact i think it's the symbol of um of the british garden birds um in the uk and um this one doesn't want to stand up the book is slightly at a slant and um and the blue tit is they're just such delightful birds um to watch it's just so magic to see those colors on a little bird the yellow and the blue is just really lovely so i think that's um that's basically um all from me today and um, I will be back on Thursday with the book launch. Um, there will be a little competition so you can win yourself a book. And um, this the, the book launch really is mostly about, I'll be perfectly honest, to support um, me, basically. Yeah, I, I suppose that, that's what I need to say. Um, because normally a book launch um, is somewhere maybe local, in a local setting with um, a nice glass of wine, maybe meeting people. Um, handing out a few signed copies and um, talking to people and none of this can happen at the moment so I'm going to have to do it as a live stream with as many people as possible watching and um, hopefully you can watch 
Um, and for those who don't know yet, we do have a Facebook group, group called Every Wanamaker. And um, hop on there. You, you can join the group and share your Makers Makes. Show us if you've made um, any of the birds that we've been featuring today. And, um, and just get in touch. And if you've got any questions about any of our products or if you want to share anything, we'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, um, I will get ready for Thursday. So hopefully I see as many as possible. And um, just stay positive, stay safe, stay sane and sober if you can. And um, until then, um, yeah, all the best. I won't say cheerio because my children think I'm, I'm a complete nutcase saying that. So I will just say a good old goodbye. See you soon.